<laughs> so now you could, in fact, I could appoint one right now to uh, somebody want to speak for our group. And some are, let me start with Marge's group. Somebody want to speak for Marge's group? She's not here. <laughs> she's doing a great job. Okay. So what what kind she's of information? What you know, What kind of information did you guys come up with? Anybody? Graduate student? No, I mean, the note taker. Reporter, yeah. the note taker, or okay. is there somebody who'd rather speak from the group though? What What was the key idea? Uh, what What um, one key idea came up out of? Uh, I think I think one key idea that came out was uh, the role of the consortium could really be identifying a, a way for people to identify what what resources are available, what expertise are available, and to somehow connect those folks together. So I have a problem, I have a solution, let's match those together. But then not losing sight of the fact that there's uh, oftentimes synergy comes unexpectedly. So we don't want to just sort of say, priority, this is what our, my needs are, here's the solution as far as equipment or data or participants, et cetera, you're collaborating on those. But then the importance of getting together periodically, either by interest group or um, uh, uh, or otherwise, and seeing what comes out of those interdisciplinary uh, conversations. So I thought that was sort of the we were, we were really talking about what what could we offer as far as just coordinating information. But then what are the other opportunities for going beyond that? And say, you can really do new things and innovative things through uh, exchange. And then we identified in detail a lot of different resources and things that could be exchanged. So um, a consortium, you, you, you loosely organized with a consortium idea. Yeah. And then we debated what kind of structure is appropriate. where you started from. You know, what, what if it's going to be loose, does it need to be um, structured? And depending on what people want to do, the different structures. So sharing and networking can be loose. Joint funding opportunities probably need to be tighter. Uh, with a little bit more structure, um, and then we identified some barriers to those collaborations. So that's, and I'm, I'm trying to organize it. <coughs> how, did, how does that compare with what you were writing down? I'll make you talk. Yeah, finish that fight, but um, you could speak for it. We, we also had a control idea. Um, I think establishing what's already existing, you, know, you also talked about that, and establishing a vision, a joint vision that we can overall, that brings us all together, that we're all working for this larger you know, kind of grand theory. Um, we spent a lot of time to get trying to get to that. Did you spend any time trying to get confused, to say confused about what the, what the purpose of doing all this data collection and really the fundamental purpose of why would we meet as a consortium. Right, so if we collect all this data, what are we gonna do with it? We started, we started um, with that well, closer. Oh, uh, I think we came up with some kind of concrete ideas about that. But, so for instance, um, in terms of more along the lines of solutions, um, one of the ideas was that we could do a invite people to submit propos proposal or workshop ideas. Maybe, maybe a better way to look at it is proposals for workshops to some board, some consortium board that would then decide which of these would be good things to, uh, to get people together on. And so these topics then would provide sort of a, a mechanism for Providing, I guess, sort of providing a vision. A vision. Like we're gonna, there's enough interest in this particular topic area to get a bunch of people together mm -hmm. to then start investigating further what could be done. But but I think we came up with some other ideas about um, what type of shared resources would help facilitate this joint effort, which ranged everywhere from. Um, getting the administrators across the various campuses on board so that we have some kind of a 
agreed upon formula about how the universities can collaborate, and especially addressing issues of, you know, um, to sort of alleviate issues of different universities trying to grab all the overhead. Right, so could we have some kind of <laughs> some kind of formula in place that would help alleviate that kind of competitiveness to streamline the proposal process? Um, having some sort of a living laboratory of potential um, participants that could be used for recruiting purposes, so that maybe we have some sort of uh, data that's already been collected on this group of people. And it might be people that include those living in the community, those in CCRCs, those in you know, independent senior housing. Um, but they would be part of our living laboratory that we could draw from for you know, different kinds of research studies. So, so we were, you know, we came up with some ideas about that. Most of these things, though, would require some kind of funding, funding at some level which we saw as kind of a barrier. But we came up with some ideas on how we might go after some funding. You know, one possibility is to try and convince each of our respective universities to contribute some money to the effort, and then that would fund sort of a joint consortium. Um, or we might try to go after some kind of foundation money, or we might try to go after NSF and NIH money that would build this sort of infrastructure. Do you understand that your group tried to identify some kind of grand challenge or research theme? Yeah. Well, not a research theme, but trying to figure, go ahead. Just figure out what the hell we were here for. <laughs> <laughs> he started the group. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer of, you know, begin with the end in mind. Until I have the end in mind, I can't do anything. I, I can't even plan what I'm going to do. So, uh, you know, and I, I, it was funny, we went through the whole hour or half, whatever the hell, I didn't focus on the first phrase in here. It says, how do we develop an interdisciplinary network? Period. That's it. How do you do it? And there are lots of ways to do that. Uh, but it involves a consortium of some kind, you know, of all the different entities involved, or want to be involved. And then uh, you have certain themes that you want to emphasize, whether it's technology applications, or uh, focus on healthcare itself, how you deliver healthcare to the elderly, <coughs> that's an issue. And you could have the models, Tiger Place versus uh, the multi generational new family or whatever new community. You know, and you could even have it based on sociology or economics or something like that. Because you got to pay for it eventually, somehow. And uh, so you might want to throw in a couple of uh, economists and maybe an attorney, and maybe even a couple of political scientists that. Uh, deal with one of the issues we bury as we identify as heaven. You know, I just encountered it myself going to the doctor last week. You know, they, she couldn't talk to me, the tech, med, medical technician could not talk to me about my problem without the doctor being in the room. And they had to close the door, you know, so nobody else would hear what was going on. I'm going to give a crap you know, I have a bad knee. I didn't care who else knew about it. If they had a solution, I was happy, but apparently there's a legal requirement now, which I think could interfere with us sharing data. You know, if you got patient data, uh, you're going to have to sanitize it somehow uh, in order to be able to use it, I think. I don't know for sure, but somebody might have to answer that question. So that's, that is a good one. We didn't discuss the de-identification of data. About IRB issues, yeah. But so I know for us, one of the problems that we've had um, in doing the studies at Tiger Place is that you know people come up to us all the time and say, "Oh, can we get your data?" And I and I have to tell them, "No, we can't give you our data because it's a relatively small number of people at this one site 
that even though there's identification numbers associated with these people, it's still a relatively small number of people <coughs> in sight. And, and so I don't feel like it's, it's ethical for me to give that data out. But if we had the strength of numbers where we have some folks at Time and Place and we had some folks at all you know, these other institutions around um, this I-70 corridor, then there would be less of a chance of somebody being able to identify that this identifier number belongs to you know, Mrs. Smith at Tiger Place. There would be a strength of numbers in being able to then pool all this data together. So uh, that so my I mean I we started with the premise that what we wanted to accomplish or what we wanted to create was a consortium that would allow us to go after big ticket funding opportunities. And then we, so we sort of started from that and then discussed, well, what sort of resources would we need to have in place to facilitate that? I thought um, one of the really good ideas was John's idea that we have people say, um, the, clini the clinical discipline say, here are the problems that I see, kind of make a list. Um, the technical folks say here are the kind of available technologies or infrastructure stuff, technology that, that we have available. Um, here are the data sets that are available. Here are the test beds that are available. And sort of begin to compile a list that could act as a starting point for a discussion. And then if we have yeah, these. Start, start from the clinical side. These are the issues the old people older adults are having. And, and see, yeah, <coughs> and see what sort of problems or what sort of solutions, technology solutions or other solutions that might be available, but to actually begin to compile a list. And then if we have these ongoing meetings, I mean, this is not, you know, we're not going to come up with a one concrete vision as a result of this first two-day workshop. I mean, it's going to it's going to be an ongoing process. So if we could come up with some kind of a mechanism that allowed us to have these types of ongoing meetings, and, and maybe if you guys think that that makes sense, we could have this sort of uh, idea of people proposing workshops on specific topics, and then we just sort of send it out to the group and say, okay, we're going to have a workshop on this particular topic next week or next month or whatever, and then people come if they're interested, and then that could become a group of interested people that could begin to address that particular topic area. And these could be kind of big vision topic areas. There, there's probably um, several of them that this group might be interested in addressing. That was brought up in our group as well, um, using the example of an NIH report website where here's everything that we're doing to be able to communicate what's existing and let people plug in and say, I want to be a part of that, or I have this, what do you have? You know, a way to communicate amongst ourselves what's there and figure out where we can fit into these different networks. Yeah, so that's another way of listing it, is that here's the existing projects. But I imagine a lot of that stuff is probably on websites. But not all in one spot. It's hard to communicate what else is out there. It's hard enough amongst inner departments, let alone cross institutions. It really requires some it, it is hard for, as a researcher and as a student, it's hard to find out what other schools are doing um, to kind of collaborate. And I'm sure that's the same issues that everybody else is having. Um, so I thought that it goes right into what you were saying is having, here's what our next meeting is. You know, if we had a central way of communicating all that information amongst ourselves so we can have those opportunities to participate, and it takes money and it takes funding, it takes infrastructure, but I think that's going to be a key part of this is the communication, that initial, even not just mass emails. And yeah, and it's hard to be face-to-face -face time, right, if, to, to begin to establish these kinds of collaborations. <coughs> yeah. I thought, to me, what struck me is that uh, 
that I got out of this that I did before is this idea of architecture and space and mobility and its impact on health and aging. So at that level, you know, you learn about it because we're in the room together and we'll have dinner. So some of it is you just have to interact with people. I mean, there are some exercises one can make where you have like a five minute pitch where everybody gets up and says, here's the things I bring. And then you interact, you know. But I mean, in terms of a grand theme, it seemed like by design that was that idea of where does space and potentially mobility intersect with health and aging is kind of the, the unique thing that, that's in this room. And then is there something unique about though that prop, about those things between Kansas and Missouri that we've got interesting environments or expertise? Well, I hope that we'll have some opportunity you know, over the next couple of days for people to have informal discussions and perhaps come up with some ideas that fit into that intersection. Sure. I have, uh, yeah, I, I may be coming from a different perspective, and I, uh, so I, I don't want to uh, unnecessarily complicate the Go question. ahead. We've had lots of that. <laughs> <laughs> my car had to get Cody and I had to go get all that, so I missed some of the conversation. But, uh, but I've been listening, you know, since I got back. And, uh, I, I'm wondering if we're asking the right question. Uh, if, if in fact, or, or, or do we have enough of a context to ask the question? And it feels to me like, and, and you know, when I think of the I-70 corridor uh, that can turn into the I-35, I-70 corridor, the I-29 corridor, whatever, uh, you know, there's enormous potential here. And, uh, you know, on multiple levels, one of them being research. But that's only one of them. And so uh, part of the problem, and, and I, I certainly don't want to ramble here, but I, I want to I, I think we need to have a dipstick of what is the issue. Uh, because there's no shortage of the financial markets, the research community, the provider community, and who all defines or doesn't define themselves in the provider community, but people who deliver health services. Uh, and all the third party services that serve uh, the, the, the issue here is that every single one of those uh, elements or silos are all in rampant pursuit of their own agenda, which is the problem. And so, uh, I, and I've spent my career trying to integrate those so that you can have an integrated solution that will actually have major impact on the way elders live. And today, the the model uh, of excitement is Tiger Place, which is, there's some really great, exciting things happening. The day before yesterday, it was Metal Art Tales in Manhattan, Kansas, and the day before that, it was somebody else. Uh, and people rally around things until something new comes along, but nothing really integrates. And I'm wondering, is the question, how can we do joint research in the research community in that silo so that we can get grants? and then come up with questions we want to ask. And if that's the question, then, you know, it's not going to be hard to come up with a long list and people pursue it, they'll get grants, and then they'll publish them, and then people will read them, and uh, wonderful. But to me, it seems like that the whole purpose of the development of an I-70 corridor of comprehensive health solutions which of which research is a part that the brain trust that's in this room and uh, missing a few others uh, uh, is that we create a framework an integrated framework uh, of, of a blanketed geographic targeted zone on which the the various elements of all these silos begin to create an integrated strategy. And then there's going to be no shortage of research questions. 
uh, that will be literally relevant to a planned strategic advancement to create tighter integration versus continuing to measure and ask research questions and report things that point to disintegration uh, or a specific uh, element that will benefit elders, which is not to be uh, under counted. But it just feels to me like we need to take technology, uh, 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 capital sourcing, uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure, programmatic infrastructure, uh, and uh, and how that relates in the continuum from acute to uh, being well and staying well, uh, and developing an integrated strategy in that targeted area, and everyone be aligned in some specific directions so that there's context for everyone to move in an aligned, integrated direction. And I could be clear out in left field here, but I, for one, I'm 57 years old, and I, my mother and my father both ended up in long-term care facilities that I'm not doing that. And I'm not doing the retirement community gig either. I'm not going to live a segregated life uh, with crystal chandeliers. So, so what, okay, but when you say integrated framework, I'm going to challenge you. Go ahead. Okay. I love that. And I like you too. <laughs> well, that's you, don't know. you don't even know. But I like and you. I like you too. Uh, you remind me of my uncle. This workshop is making progress okay. already. That's right. That's right. Uh, an integrated framework for what? We're back to your question. Okay. But it's, research, but it's yeah. bigger, he's saying it's bigger than research. It's bigger than multidisciplinary research. So we're back to we're back to George's summary statement, which is this is all about improving the quality of life. And I would I would really add more than quality of life. It's it's focusing, it's improving quality of life function and, in, and independence for older people. You know, it's something global like that. I mean, it, you know, but heck, I don't know. Um, I always, I, I always go back to independence, that you err on the side of independence, you promote independence, self-determination, those fundamental things for older people. And, but, uh, and that our research has always been focused on improving function, and improving independence, you know. Um, yeah. But, but, I, but that's what I think you're, but I, really, when, when the group asked me, what the hell are we talking about? I said that we're, I think our chancellors and our provosts all went to the same meeting, and they all did the, you know, the, the um, about all the same strategic planning on all the core three or four, five concepts for each campus to focus on. So they all went to that same strategic planning workshop. And, um, but what, what we are in, then they all heard that there were big grants coming. And there are big grants that are gonna come and you're gonna have to have a big network of places in order to get those big grants. I mean, that's the bottom line. And we're all a bunch of people who like aging and we want to get together and make sure that KU collaborating with MU and UMKC and K-State and WashU and whatever, all of that together, we've got a shot at some of those big ones that normally just go to Harvard. Okay. If that, if <laughs> Is that it? You got if it. that's the vision, then... Well, but great grants don't just have to be about research, though. They can be no. about creating new models and creating new programs right. and creating new systems. And so. I think your point is we don't just want to focus on data and public. I agree. So <coughs> it's got to help the I, I think we're closer well, that's, that's than we thought idea. we were between the two that's groups. The I, I think we talked a lot about that kind of vision. We didn't talk about geography so much, but about vision. And I think that's kind of what you're saying, having a strategy that supports that vision, which is what we also talked about, having three or four or five big goals that support a bigger vision that then the grants start to funnel into. And so that. I don't think it has to just be about data and research and money for us. It has to be about what systems change. The problem, you know, we got a whole bunch of old folks, okay? That's right. And we got to deal with it. 
and that's what, what it's all about. You don't put them on ice floes and float them out to the ocean. Now, I ain't going to do that because I don't like cold. Um, but you got to deal with that somehow. You know that we want to uh, a. Um, you know, I go and I exercise in the morning. I don't know uh, uh, what's her name's not here, but uh, she and I go down to the. Uh, gym and exercise every, uh, three times a week, and I'm going to keep doing that until I collapse, you know. Uh, I ride a bike the rest of the time, and my wife has a fit when I get on the bike because she's afraid I'm going to fall off of it, but I tell her that keeps me, you know, keeps my balance and everything. But I'm the exception, because my colleagues that are my age are dropping like flies. You know, I, I get I notice a, a friend off who's already deceased, and I thought, you know, I played football with them, and I thought, well, hell, that would never happen to them, but it, it's happening. And so I think this this group of older folks want to have a good life. They don't want to suffer. They don't want, but they do want health care delivered. We have to figure out how to deliver that. Align it in an integrated way. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no reason why we can't address this to meet these multiple goals. Where so we come together, we we set up some sort of an infrastructure that allows us to go after bigger ticket grant opportunities, but we do it in such a way that also allows us to translate the results of those research outputs into um, operational use. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I think if the, if the, and, and of course everything has to be video information and research that gives us enlightened uh, awareness and methodologies. I mean, there, who can argue with that? So, if that's the goal, is the universities, you know, come together and they uh, select research topics and they uh, that makes it more likely that we can, that there can be or that you can, that the university can access. The big money. Well, uh, and, and the, okay, then let's just be real clear about that. But, but that's not what but, I'm hearing. No, that's not what I'm hearing. I'm, I'm well, hearing. yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, uh, but, uh, and that's, that's not bad as long as it's part of something greater. And and that's what we are here. Right. Okay. And, and so your, your statement of a common vision of improving the quality of life for older Americans, however you phrase it, up here, and it, underneath it, you've got the researchers, you've got the stakeholders, you've got all these other groups that are a consortium. And so the stakeholders have a role. They get to say to the researchers, these are the important parts of these problems. They get to help the researchers connect to the places to be able to, to, to do our work. The consortium serves the purpose of bringing all those people together around the table um, to share their different perspectives on it. It's not just the research, it's not just What's the practical application in the field? Um, uh, everybody's being able to be together is going to make it make it work better. I think, I think in a lot of ways, that I think you said this earlier. The, the grant grant money is not the most important thing here. It is important. It ultimately, you need it, but the ideas need to come first. <coughs> And we had the phrase here a minute ago about the relevant question. I mean, researchers aren't the only ones that have an insight on what's the relevant question. We've got to have the stakeholders to help us understand that. If we don't have the relevant questions, we won't get the money to go after. I think we are talking a lot more general topic or general issue in general age population. And then I'm just curious about there is a specific topic concern on aging population in the Midwest because we are, I Stephanie, so we are more familiar with resources for involvement or population in the Midwest, culturally or some geographically. So we need to specify more research topic or practice topic relevant to the Midwest aging population. I think it is a good start to narrow down some our a goal to do some specific. But is that different than, than the, uh, the problems for the aging and you know, 
across the U.S. I, I'm just curious. So, if there is something more specific concern, more specific opportunity in the U.S. In that case, we need to highlight that part. For example, technology. The cancer, Google Fiber start in the Kansas City, and then you know I'm from Korea originally, and then Korea really watch out what happened in Kansas City because telemedicine is will be uh, will be applied to the pan Korean medical system. <coughs> so uh, the co Korean government really want to see what outcome from the Google Fiber or Google Fiber research research project, and then they really want to adopt the research project to the Korean um, research project. So I think there is some specific resources or some challenges in Midwest Midwest regions, so we can highlight <coughs> the part. Um, and then in the case, we will have more strength to compete some Grand, grand money or funding opportunities. Looking at kind of organize, I was trying to organize our notes, and I think that there's kind of a, there are two approaches. One would be substantive, like trying to find a, uh, which may not be possible <laughs> given the broad, you know, but another one is could you look at the consortium as a mechanism for finding smaller teams of people that have overlapping, because you could really get bogged down with trying to find some overarching topic, but <coughs> can the consortium serve as a, as a, a place where people can meet and pool resources and go off in different directions. Um, uh, you know, we talk more about team coordinating team approaches rather than trying to have one unified move forward on a particular topic. So I don't know if that would be more more, more doable, at least in the short term, to get some momentum and something. You know, what what would be the infrastructure? needed to start those smaller collaborations. And then it may be through that there's an, an underlying theme that emerges, that everybody seems to be doing X. But it may not be, it may kill the enthusiasm. <laughs> I, I'm afraid if, if everybody is sort of trying to find something that we're all going to work on together. I don't know if that's feasible. But, we, but I think, I'm going to say it again, we've got, this is a weird meeting that we have architecture with health and we have I mean, the architecture component to me is very novel. And just thinking about it, there's a lot of architecture schools along this corridor. When, where I came from Vanderbilt, we didn't have a school of architecture, you know, and we didn't really even have an undergraduate nursing school. So that, this idea of the impact upon the built environment, <coughs> of architecture on health, and getting the data together to allow researchers to explore that is such a broad topic that you could kind of figure out, well, what would it take to support that? You know, there are some existing mechanisms like the CPSA in Kansas City. I think what the Midwest has that's different than maybe more urban areas is we cover a really broad spectrum of built environments or almost non-built environments that is different than a even a South Florida or a DC, you know, and you can look at it, you can say you got the guy who loves the nursing home, you got the person who wants to live on the farm as long as they can. And so that creates, uh, you know, a yeah, unique great diversity. Yeah, great and that's, diversity. that gives us something unique in the fact that we've got expertise in the architecture combined with the health and the technology is kind of unique to me. One of the things from the private industry perspective, which I bring as well as the architecture and planning perspective is that, um, with, with the help of people like Richard Jackson, who's uh, uh, coming at it from the medical point of view, we as designers are, are just sort of realizing that we've been kind of going about designing cities and neighborhoods the wrong way since World War II. And if you look at the, uh, basically the advent of city planning, it was uh, really driven because of health concerns of cities coming at it from the health perspective, <coughs> highly defined by physicians. And so we're kind of rediscovering that you know what, maybe we should listen and, and start talking to the medical community again and starting to think about how do we start to reshape uh, um, our, our neighborhoods and our, and our communities. So I think for me that's an intersection that exists both in the private sector as well as the resources here at, at the university level. And, um, and so I think, you know, if you look at the, the fantastic example of Missouri, University of Missouri with Tiger Place, if you thought about having a pilot project spread across this I-70 corridor with every single university 
and then being able to compare and contrast how those outcomes have been and how they're starting to change, I think that becomes pretty helpful. That's, uh, that's certainly the direction I was going in. I, I, I want to quantify this because this, you know, you, you point out that, you know, wow, this is really unusual that health and architecture is you know, like that's That's truly unusual. And so the, the reason why I brought up the point and probably was very articulate doing it is that uh, you know but our company and, and this isn't about our company but the reason why our company exists is because we're a healthcare company but we have an architecture firm we have a financial model we source capital etc and this isn't about trying to get opportunity here it's quite the opposite but the reason why we formed that. Uh, because I, I ran a not-for-profit that was in the position of Tiger Place for about 15 years that created a new model. And I saw what scrunched and squeezed the ability to duplicate high-quality operation of new models. And, and it was, uh, and everybody likes to be with people who are like themselves. So uh, researchers will have a complexion of a conversation that's about, that's kind of, research thinking. Uh, but I sit at tables like this with with uh, investment bankers. And they like to sit with people that are other investment bankers. And uh, so you can be passionate about a quality question, and they don't give two hoots about it. But they're going to impact your ability. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, uh, there's, there's all these pieces that there are five major drivers that will allow you to create a comprehensive advancement. But everybody approaches them in their own way. And so, uh, and I'm being inarticulate again, uh, I think, but my question is, uh, and I, I want to build on what you were saying, or my point is, is the question here that you get different stakeholders to advise you as researchers on the questions you ask, that, that's one model. Or is there, is there a group that represents uh, an investment, manager, investment bankers, architects, financial models, et cetera, to help create a context for geographic, strategic placement of new models that we know would have a high likelihood of advancing the integration of health services and quality of living that we want to research. So there's some plenty of research questions that we want to be able to analyze and duplicate in other areas through the investment banking community that the operating model and the operators can uh, codify. In other words, so that uh, everybody is doing their thing but they're in an aligned, comprehensive, strategic, geographic transformation so that everybody can uh, do their pieces to their heart's content, but it would have an integrated context in which to do that. And that's what has plagued the healthcare system since the 50s, is that lack of integrated approach. And I think that we have an opportunity here to maybe think a little bit differently about how we approach this. So are you proposing that we solve the health problem in the U.S.? <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning. Think about tomorrow. You know what? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, and it's within our grasp the reason that we don't. And uh, the reason that we don't is because none of us think that's possible, so we stay with our peace. There's only four countries <coughs> that we just need integrated. And it, I don't, maybe not America, but this geographic zone. And if it's good, somebody will follow. Just like they're following you at Tiger Place. Just like they followed us at Tiger Park Hills. People are following something that's effective. And uh, that might have seemed uh, a little grandiose on the front end. Are you suggesting that we change the condition of the elders? In Missouri, yes. <laughs> Were we suggesting that we change the way nursing home life is in Manhattan, Kansas? Yes. Did, are they having impact nationally and internationally? Yes. Can we have an integrated planning context 
that would transform the continuum uh, and uh, be able to ask research questions, to be able to have a viable economic model, to have a uh, flow between the continuum elements? Yes. Well, yes. if you just play with this idea, and I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there because I hadn't thought of it this way. So I suppose it's good that you sat next to me. Do look like my uncle Cussy. <laughs> oh, he was a good was guy. Was he an Irish alcoholic? He was. Well, <laughs> but he was Irish. Uh, he was Irish. Yeah, no. But I hadn't. I, I, I hadn't really thought about it that way. But if you look along, you know, I keep staring at this map, thinking, you know, this when we built Tiger. We built Tiger Place. We had to get, uh, we had to pass legislation twice because we failed the first time and to get all the pieces right. So we had to do it in 99 and 2001 uh, to be able to build it because it's built ultimately to nursing home standards with waivers. Right. It's licensed as intermediate care so people can use traditional long term care insurance when right. they qualify. But it's operated as independent housing with services, right. which is what makes it cost effective because you have your base service package of living there and your care bill goes up and down because it waives all of that crazy long term care regulation. It sets, I mean, outside the state of Missouri, right. I hope there's nobody from the Department of Health, but you know, it sets all that stuff aside that has been over, over, over regulated. So the care bill goes up and down as mom gets better. And, um, and, and then if she has another health event, her care bill goes back up because she takes more services. And then as she gets better, she, it's surprising. You get a higher bill, you're highly motivated to oh, become independent again. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's been ultimately you know, $20,000 a year less than nursing home. <coughs> over, you know, even through the end of life. So it's been less than when people qualify for right. nursing home. It's right. one I mean, it's, component. It's one, of it's one way of looking at it. part of the solution. Too. Right. So. But, and so, but it's a new so model. It, it, it new is the new model because it's built that way. And, and we could get regulators to approve it. Right. We wanted to say, we want to test this on that I-70 corridor. The healthcare association is going to have a stroke. Um, because they won't want that competition, uh, potentially, you know. And that's, I mean, that's what happened before. I've been that's, there. Yeah. Been to that. Been to that part. Yeah. And uh, so I, I'm happy to let you leave that file because <laughs> I don't have another one in me. Um, but but it, but you're right. There, there's really no reason why it couldn't be done. And then put other ideal solutions with that this sustainable and going forward is how do we teach this to the next generation of students? Oh, that's what the topic of workshop two is all about. <laughs> okay, never mind. They're working, <laughs> They're working on this across the Thank you for me. They're working. Yeah. I guess my, my question is this is all really exciting. Do you want to you do you want the consortium to be about one thing or is this something that emerges through this interdisciplinary exchange and then a team goes off and pursues it. I guess, I, and, and is there room for other ideas yeah, and- I, I don't know, this sounds like a really big right, an idea, which right. could, could cover- But it's one piece no, no, of it, you but, know, it's one But piece. that could cover everything. So among this, I mean, with, within this overall our overarching vision, there's gonna be a lot of individual pockets of different kinds of projects to be able to address that. But I, I like that. Let's go grandiose. We want to change the healthcare system. Sure, why not? Let's go for it. Yeah, I mean, but that's too generic. I mean, to me, it's the built environment's impact upon the healthcare system. Because you got a unique built environment there which had a regulatory well, the Tiger Place. Right but now then, we're enamored with well, Tiger Place. Right, well, there'll be something about that. that. But, yeah. I mean, my point to the gentleman beyond these point, you know, the design of the post-World War II environment is very different than it was before. Right. 
And you know, I mean, I'm close to Overland Park, which is the home of the suburb, right? right. And that's a really unique thing. It's kind of like, wow. Well, yeah. Can I interject? Yeah. Part? Because Overland Park um, is going to be the new home of the National Museum of the Suburb. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so I mean, it's, don't laugh. No, I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's why they got put at the yeah. bowling alley. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But you look at it and say that's a trend across all of America, but in the Midwest we have that a lot in St. Louis, you know. But we also have like, you know, inner city too. Right. And understanding, you know, what the impact on health is for these different built environments, whether you're at the microcosm level of a tiger place or whether you're more broadly looking at the the, the community it could be an overarching area and you could Hone in on it like a micro level to say, what about discharge rehospitalization placement? Or you well, can zone out and look at it at a, at a built neighborhood level. Yeah. That's a huge element of this, and uh, that's why I just want to make sure we at least consider it. And if we have to call it changing healthcare in America, we can do that too. But uh, this, this is really what we've learned uh, in, in the work that we do, and we've done it in other countries too. It, it, it isn't about whether it's uh, Metal Arc Hills or Tiger Place or pick another one. Mm -hmm. What it is, is the integration of, the, the reason why, like if you drive from uh, the plaza <coughs> and you drive out to 119th and Nall and you watch what happens to the community, it, it's like you feel this deep sense of place and then it gets worse and then it gets worse and then it just keeps getting worse. That's because there wasn't an integration with other elements. And so the, the thing I think that we can create that creates research questions is that uh, is if we create a framework for the development of an area that uh, the problem with architectural design is it doesn't really fully connect with how it's used. And it doesn't, uh, and uh, the problem with healthcare is it doesn't fully connect to the person who needs the service. And so it, it, it's a gluing of the driving principles to advance forward. And that will produce things like Tiger Place. It will produce additional innovations beyond Tiger Place. But it's a framework of thought and approach that can be researched uh, and will produce better outcomes. And that's what I think we have the possibility for. If it's, if it's exciting, just the idea of health and, and physical environment being intersected, well then we have to be just as excited about the financial modeling. And we have to be just as excited about the operational framework. And we have to be just as excited about the integration between the continuum from acute to on. And that's very packageable. It's very packageable. And you've got a major component in that infrastructure is all the tech stuff. And that's the, see, that's what's different in this room. All the technology engineer folks think of, in this room. Think of the potential for the technology in that kind of context. Just to support that. Yeah. That's right. It's dramatically without, different. Without technology, it's the same old shit I've looked at for years <laughs> as a nurse. And what I think it's the same clinical problems for older people without the technology. It's mom's functional decline, it's mom's falls, it's mom's skin problems, it's the nutrition, the cognitive it's, decline, it's, the physical It's a significant problem. element. It is. Others. It yeah. is. So if you look at what's the common denominator here, it is technology, but when you talk about you know, scaling up, it's not scaling, not only scaling across the map with other prototypical projects, but it's also scaling up in, in size from the room to the, the community, right. up to the neighborhood. So that's right. Think, down to the next. If you think that's about right. an embedded sensor network that not only operates at a building scale, but in between buildings and landscapes, access, roadways, transportation, I think that's the power. Right. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah, but you know what? The reason why we don't do that stuff is because we want the comfort of, of being able to feel like we're going to be successful in our own zone. That's why we reject this kind of stuff. But it's why we have what we have. And you've seen in uh, scalable outcomes like Tiger Place, or there are some other uh, real innovative sure. home and community-based and facility-based 
are dotted around the country that people don't track systematically, but they're out there. And every single one of them, what drove the success was all the pieces start pulling together in concert. And that's the anomaly of Tiger Place. That was the anomaly of Middle Earth Hills. That was the anomaly of, you know, there were five or six others. That was the anomaly. Because the parts came together. Well, it's five o'clock, five after. Y'all get a break because we meet again at 5.30. Because we have, yeah, we have the reception at 5.30. Yeah. Um, we were so supposed to give you all a break. Uh, so what we're going to do tomorrow, you know, we have the second question that we're going to discuss. So everybody that was meeting with Marilyn today is going to meet with me and vice versa tomorrow morning to discuss the second question. But then at the end, we're going to come together and you know, with the other workshop, and we need to have some sort of compilation of what we discussed in terms of opportunity barriers and solutions that we can kind of present in a more or less summary way to the other workshop attendees. So um, we have, I don't even know the name of Catherine. Catherine. So Catherine typed up the notes from our workshop You'll break out. Do you okay. have? Do you yes. have typed up notes? Not typed. No. But, but I can type work fast. Together. <laughs> you, you'll work together before tomorrow morning. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, she already has. I mean, you had what I. I, I, do I have, I and she organized it, but they're not really organized in opportunity. Yeah, because it, the discussion sort of went back and forth. You just you identified that air barrier. And have maybe maybe so. you could. The two of you should meet and work on that, and then we could have some input into it. Okay. Okay. You can start. Because some of the start stuff, that. some of the stuff that we did is in the form of solutions. We talked exactly. about some specific solutions. Right. We got it. Yeah. Okay. We're work. good. You're okay. you're good. Can you email that to me? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah because you have more work to do.